Hello and welcome once again to Just For Men Footy Flashbacks. Today we take you back to 1995 for the round 21 thriller between West Coast and Carlton. The Eagles had won two flags in the previous three years, but in 1995 a new force was emerging. The Blues had lost just twice in the season and were on an 11 game winning streak heading into this round 21 fixture. There were some champion names on both sides. Worsfold, Mainwaring, McKenna, Lewis, Jakovic and Matera to name a few for the West Coast. While at Carlton there was Kernahan, Williams, Silvani, Ratton, Kudafides and the running machine Craig Bradley. Two of those big names have since moved from the heat of the footy field into the heat of the kitchen. And that's where Neil Kearney has found them today to help us remember round 21, 1995. Well, we're here to talk about round 21, 1995, but this could turn into an episode of My Kitchen Rules. With us, Anthony Curtafides, a former Carlton champ. You own a Savlaki hut in the Melbourne suburb of Templestowe. Yeah, I've been there for almost three years now, Neil, and uh, the franchises are expanding along the east coast. Well, alongside you here, the owner of Pinocchio's here in Turak Road, South Yarra, one of Melbourne's poshest suburbs, and uh, nice, sell a nice pizza here, Fraser Gerrick. It is, mate. It's uh, only moved in about six months ago, but it's been an institution in Melbourne for 40 years, and uh, yeah, if you want pizza and pasta, come here. So this could be end up a fight between a Savlaki and a pizza, eh? <laughs> I think, no, Kuda, no. think Kuda might have me covered, mate. I don't do too much uh, hands-on work, but silent partner, you'd call me. So... Fraser, we're here to talk about 1995. It was your first season. You'd come from Murray Bush Rangers. Yeah, it was. It's uh, yeah, it was a big move for me, going from the country to over to Perth. And uh, I, I had a year in the waffle in 1994 and made my debut and pretty much played every or most of the games in 1995. Well, they kept saying in the in the coverage you were the fastest player at the West Coast Eagles at yeah. your size <laughs> at six yeah. foot four or five. Oh, I sort of had a couple, you know, with obviously there was a couple of very quick players with the Matera boys and uh, Ash McIntosh was a similar size to me that was also very quick. Um, so, you know, we had, used to have some good training competitions. So what was it like when you started this game and you lined up on the super athlete Cooter? Yeah, it was a strange one because, um, I mean, later in the career, career we certainly played on each other a few times, but um, yeah, I think I actually started forward and Cooter played on me and then he caught a light and I had to go switch onto him and uh, play back and midfield and everywhere. So it was a bit of a worry trying to keep up with him. You were 19, Curti, you were 22. Yeah, I was, yeah. How to be that age again? Oh, I'd love to go back even just for a couple of weeks to enjoy what we did back then. But Fraser was an unbelievable athlete and uh, he destroyed me when, when I was in, in defence at the start of the game and he was in the forward line and I, I luckily got moved. What happened to you? Did you get confused or were you just not getting into the game? Or yeah, no, I started in defence and usually I played on the wing but I had to pick up the young fella here, Fraser, and uh, he was lightning quick and, you know, West Coast were an amazing team and the skills were incredible too but I think he got a few early ones on me and David Park and thought that's enough, we'll, we'll throw Cooter in the forward line. Well, at this stage in 1995, Carlton was on fire, wasn't it? Mm. Went yeah. 11 straight before this game. Yeah, we'd lost two to the bottom two teams, and then after that we just put it all together and we had 11 in a row. The toughest game for us was obviously to go to Subiaco in WA and play against West Coast Eagles, who our record had been not crash, but we've had some good performances against them too. But this was a huge game for us against a really good team. Fraser, you'd gone to the West Coast Eagles. They won the premiership the year before. Yeah, big certainly. boys. They were, you know, there was a lot of uh, emphasis on power and, and strength and uh, all the boys were very physically strong and, and fit and uh, 95 was an up and down year I guess after winning the premiership in 94, we had a lot of injuries and stuff like that and we were starting to come good and uh, you know, it set up for a really good game against Carlton who were obviously flying. Well we're going to show the last quarter of this match but it was an absolute cracker for four quarters wasn't it, it was one of the best games you would have played in. Yeah, I don't think there was two goals in it all day. Maybe at the start it was, but after that it was a real close affair all the way through. Tough and hard and, and very quick and skillful football. And quickly, some of the clashes. Um, the shirt front that uh, Earl Sporting laid on Guy McKenna 20 minutes into the first quarter. What would he have got now if, uh, if that was now? Oh, it would have been just about yeah. the year, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. That was one it of the is. biggest hits, but full credit to Guy. I know you would know him better than I did, but the comeback after that knock, that was the biggest hit I think I've seen as a footballer. Was yeah. he left exposed, Guy McHenry? He was yeah. tapping the ball. And... Yeah, he certainly was. Jacko probably should have uh, blocked the girl <laughs> off. <and> big <laughs> Earl out, which is always a thing, running in off the square. You've got to blo block your bloke out, but Earl was, a, Earl was one of the biggest, strongest blokes I played against, and he was 105 kilos and just a big ox. What about the clashes on the wings? There were some absolute crackers there, wasn't there? Matera playing Camperiali, that was absolute 
bolt here of a, of a clash, wasn't it? Well, actually, Scott Camparelli did really well on Pete, but Pete was unbelievable that day. When he got the ball, when he was able to run through the middle and kick a couple of incredible goals, he was hard to stop, but, you know, Campo did really well. And on the other wing, Mill Hanna against Chris Mayne Waring was absolutely Yeah, great. I think they played on each other a lot. Mooney was obviously very hard at it, and they're both good athletes, good in the air, um, ran all day, and super competitive, so they, I think they had a, a lot of great battles over the years, and uh, this was no exception. Well, as you said, Kurt, that was close all day. I think the Eagles were in front by a point at three-quarter time. It'll be good to look forward to this last quarter, won't it? It'll be an exciting quarter. Fraser, Kurda, we'll be back after the game. Let's have a look now at the last quarter of uh, Eagles versus Blues, round 21, 1995. Well, the expectation for this last half hour of action. We look forward to the game and it hasn't let us down. We start the last quarter. Madden wins in the middle, but there's no space for the uh, midfielders. Ratton goes off the ground and gets a good kick to the 50. Whitehead caught behind Hart. Jakovic, a beautiful mover. Kicks across the half-back line. Simmons. He's got Gehrig in support. Oh, not a great kick by Simmons. The hand pass up for Carlton. Whitehead has it on the 50. He gets it going forward. Clappe soccer's off the ground, and it's coming back to be a free kick to Carlton to Adrian Whitehead. And the crowd not happy. Whitehead's already kicked two goals. The free kick count is 19 to 15 in favour of Carlton. Kernahan's taken just one mark for the day. There's Rice. Back he goes to the captain. Kernahan from near the boundary line. Poster. Boy, the scores are level. Gave that a fair whack, didn't he? It slammed right into the uh, the goal post halfway up. But Mitchell White has done an extremely good job on Stephen Kernahan. Just a one mark all day for Kernahan, who can be a very damaging player for the Blues in that forward line. McKenna finds the loose pike down towards Matera. Good punch away by Camparelli. What a duel that's been. Tony Evans over the top, and he's been pinged for holding the ball. Well, that might have been a bit tough. Swings and slides, I think, Kevin. He got away with a couple of, a little earlier, which he may have been caught on. Evans down towards Pike, who recovers well. The Norm Smith medalist around the corner to Hetty. Got a bad bounce. And in fact, the ball ricocheted up and hit Manton in the face. So Manton gets his chance here at Carlton. Big game. After crossing from Essendon. Madden taps to the front of the pack, Camper Rally. Quick kick back towards centre wing. Mitchell White's very happy to see it just trickle over. And Mick very Malt good player. Sorry, Kevin, but Mick Malthouse has Chris Lewis starting on the bench and John Warsfold comes back into the forward line. And it's been Andrew Mackay who's been so dominant across half back for there against those two opponents. He's been very, very good. Uh, Mackay as Pike kicks back, looking for ball. Manton backed up by Silvani. He's been uh, fouled. So a free kick is coming back to Silvani. In fact, he's going to pay upfield to Ange Christou. Kick by Christou towards the centre of the ground. Low to the ground, Kernahan marks. His second mark for the day. He's got support. Whitehead's had more space than any player's had all day to the forward line. Rice slides, a half volley. He's got it, Dean Rice. The hand pass to no one in particular. It dropped short of Clappe. He interfered with Hart. Play on, says the umpire. Matera gets the hand pass away, and the Eagles clear. Centre of the ground, a one-hander pulled in by White, well up the ground. He slid it away, but it's intercepted by Hanna. Kicked by Hanna. A high ball to centre half forward. Big pack, no mark. Matera, hurried kick out of defence. Here are the two Ruckman, Turnbull and Madden. Turnbull keeps the ball in. Oh, uh, Madden grabs him and gives away an easy free kick. It was a silly free kick because he had support in Whitehead. He may not have known it, but under, in the context of the game, Terry, it was silly. It was. All Justin had to do was to contain him on the boundary line. In actual fact, as you call, the reinforcements were coming in young Whitehead. And it was a long run that Madden didn't really need in his 307th game on a hot day. So a free kick should have been paid there to Dean. Evans caught. Kemp. Great tackle, Peter Dean. Christou under pressure. This is a great game. Whitehead's gone on to Peter Matera down here in the foreground. 
with Camparelli going up to a forward pocket. So that contest, which has raged for over three quarters, is now over. A left footer by Evans inside the 50. McKay streams down the ground at the ball. Here's Metropolis. He kicked four goals in his first quarter of league football. He goes off the left, hooks it badly, and Silvani takes the mark. Scores level at 78 points apiece. McKay marks on the defensive 50 for Carlton. Short pass. Beauty too. And Kudafidis marks in between half-back and centre wing. A kick by Anthony Kudafidis. Players looking into the sun here. Difficult one. Hart with Caparelli. And the ball out of play. Now in between wing and half-forward for Carlton. And so far in this last quarter, we've had just one behind, and that's for the Blues. The score's level. So Turnbull thumps the ball to the front of the pack. Banfield does the roving, gives it across to Jakovic. This time he doesn't hit his target. Camparelli, the bottom of the pack. Bonds there for Carlton. Kick off the ground by Simmons. Here's a chance. Hannah, all he needs is a clean pickup. He does that. Point of the square. It's got Bradley loose. So Craig Bradley is shooting from just inside 50. This was a good kick from Hannah. Just being able to spot uh, Bradley in short and just tossing it up over the top there. This is a very important kick from Craig Bradley. Uh, one of the better ones I would suggest from the Carlton side from set shots. Well, he's had 14 possessions. His opponent for most of the day has been Banfield. He's had 13. This is just inside 50. As he popped it through. He has. That's why he's won three best and fairest with Carlton. Been one of the best players over the last eight or nine years. A lot of this play was set up again by Scott Camparelli. He worked extremely hard in the half forward flank and he, his work allowed the ball to be spilt out to Hannah who in turn passed it on to Bradley but some good work from that young player now playing at half forward. Well, it took seven minutes into the last quarter for the first goal, and the Blues lead by six points, but the Eagles go forward. Metropolis just outside the 50. Back to Evans. Evans from 51. There's nobody on the goal line. Hetty. Oh, great mark. Magnificent mark by Brett Hetty. And he had to go for it. It was missing. It was going through for a behind. The Eagles want a goal. And that was just sensational by Hetty. She's a tight angle. He runs around the left footer. It's through. Scores level again. <laughs> so the arm wrestle continues and they're dead level. And it's continuing on because of the, the intense way that every player on the ground is quite prepared to fight for the ball. And this one's Brett Hedison. He has to really throw himself there. He knows that he's got the pressure of Whitehead coming down upon him, but he was able to take it there and complete the goal. Very good work from Brett Hedy. So the skipper, Johnny Walsfold, comes off for the Eagles. Chris Lewis back onto the forward pocket. Mackay's been a stumbling block down there today for the Blues. Been very good across half-back. Madden wins the tap. Kicked off the ground by Kudafidis. Evans does likewise. It's a race in two. Whitehead against Matera. Matera paddles the ball along. Magnificent play. Daisy cut oh, a pass and finds Lewis. McIntosh is on a lead. He's got Hetty in the square. He's got a loose player. Metropolis. Who's been very lively early in this final term. Wonderful play by Matera. Just had the presence of mind, the balance against Whitehead, the experience, just to win that crucial possession. It's amazing how the balance of a one-on-one -on -one contest goes. I think uh, Matera was involved being a, the hunter with uh, Camparelli, but now it's changed around so he can dictate terms. So Metropolis, just inside 50. May have pushed it left, he has. Welcome back to Footy Flashbacks and the Just For Men Then and Now profile today has Fraser Garrick in the spotlight. And doesn't Fraser look magnificent with a full mane as a 19 year old back in 1995? 
Well, it's time to head back to the footy and to see if Fraser can get his Eagles home. This is the final quarter of the Round 21 clash in 1995 between West Coast and Carlton. Crowd chanting Eagles. They've been beaten twice already at their home ground this year by Essendon and Footscray. Oh, he's taken oh, no. too long and the umpire's pinned him. Ange Christou, the umpire said, sorry Ange. So, umpire Coates throws it up on the edge of the goal square. Carlton desperate to get it out of here now. Dean has lifted in the second half. And the ball's out of bounds about 20 metres around from the behind post. The rule was brought in because uh, the football fans and media alike were very critical of the fact that full backs were taking so long to bring the ball back into play. Not a problem, but in the spirit of the law, as Ange Christou was doing nothing wrong. Oh, it's tight here again. Sexton leads in the race. Might have got a boot to it. Yes, out of bounds on the full. It was a centimetre inside the line, and by accident, Sexton has socketed it out on the full. And let's have a look at this one. It's just about out. Oh, I don't know either. Not sure that that is a correct decision. And uh, McIntosh was very keen to give the ball away to Pike to shoot for goal. The umpire said, no, McIntosh, you were the closest there. You take it. And Pike is bleeding, so has to go off with the blood rule. So now Ashley McIntosh has plenty of time to look at this shot for goal. Now, he's passed it in. I'm not sure that uh, the replacement, Lyle, it was, was on the ground and so McIntosh will have to do it again. Not only on the ground, the replacement's got to take up the position of the player who came off the ground. That's right. So, Eagles by a point, a free kick to Ashley McIntosh, who has kicked three goals from limited opportunities. Oh, what a kick! Now he's kicked it with his right foot. Absolutely kidding. How can he kick it on his right foot like that? Now, earlier in that third term, he also had a shot for goal and uh, elected not to kick with his preferred kicking uh, leg, being the left foot. And uh, so he must have some thigh problem. He's missed a lot of footy. We can only suggest that. But to be hard up the boundary line on his preferred side and kick it with his non-preferred leg and pop it through, quite sensational. Well, it's deafening here at Subiaco. The Eagles are seven points in front. Ratton punches the ball. Bradley runs onto it. Ground level taken by Mainwaring. Chance for Hetty. Needs a kind bounce. Mainwaring goes over the top. Hetty feeds the ball off to Turnbull. Chance for McIntosh. Silvani punches it over the line. They want deliberate. They won't get it. David Parkin has uh, reacted and brought Scott Camparelli back onto Peter Matera to try and curb that run, but two inspirational pieces of play, and that last one by Ashley McIntosh seems to have really lifted this stadium up towards the Eagles. Madden wins the tap. Gives a chance for Sexton. Has time. Kicks back where we see Spalding. Takes the grab. Chance now onto the left boot. He's got Rice as a target. Also Kernahan in front. Oh, great mark, Guy McKenna. I wonder if he knows he's taken these marks. <laughs> he's got a loose player in hard. It drops a sit-up. Plenty of time to recover to Simmons. The Eagles look to have a bit of run. Simmons' target is ball. Oh, good body work by Silvani. 11 and three-quarter minutes remaining in the game and a seven-point lead to the Eagles. Sexton, a long kick to half-forward. Spalding palms the ball down. Simmons is there for the Eagles. Jakovic peeling past. Short pass is good. Matera centre wing. Camparelli's gone back onto Peter Matera. 21 disposals for Peter Matera. Ball has gone off to the Eagles and Wilson on. Peter Wilson, a last minute inclusion for Waterman has had just two possessions today. Hetty taken out of it and will take a free kick against Manton. Looks like Manton might have a bit of the cramp as well. I suppose as the age in some of the Carlton legs might tell at the end of a really pressure cooker game on a hot day. 
Left footer this time by McIntosh. One out is Lewis. He goes to ground from McKay. McKay's left footer out of defence. Very high. No great distance. Heady climbs high in the air. Matera first to recover. He had cramp just prior to three-quarter time. He dropped the ball in the tackle. Caparelli. Goes short. He's looking for Bradley. Takes the mark. Got a chance to play on some rebound football for Carlton as needed. Long bomb for Spalding. Jakovic has been very good. Chance now for Williams at ground level. Playing on the four-line. Spalding gets the ball out wide. It went to Hannah. The ball comes back to Bond. He's got the pace. Back to Ratton. It's a long bomb. The goal square. Rice has got two to beat. Oh, he does oh. it. Fantastic mark, Dean Rice. He had to beat two. He kicked a goal in the first term. And this will get the Blues back to within a point. And we've still got just under 10 minutes to play. Bang! The Eagles 91, Carlton 90, with under 10 minutes remaining. The knockout comes to Main Waring. Plenty of distance from a standing start kick. Inside 50. Dean climbs. Missed it. Well done, Sexton. But caught by Wilson. It spills to Hetty. Pulled off his kick. Matera, too high for McIntosh. Manton shares it with Dean. Plenty of Carlton players. Bond has got fresh legs. Takes it to the line. And it's out of bounds for a throw in. About 20 metres around from the behind post. A good call there, Drew. Uh, Bond with the fresh legs. He's the one that's got to be right in amongst the play now and try and break it up and perhaps even be a ball carrier as M Matera did in the third quarter. Lyle on the boundary line, ready to come on for the Eagles. It's in the forward pocket for Eagles. Picked up by Dean. Experience. The kick smothered by Pike. Christo back to Bond. To Ratton. The Blues defence under pressure. They do it well. Good punch away. By Fraser Gehrig. Here's a chance taken by Banfield. It's into the square. McIntosh can't take the mark. Silvani's held. Silvani was held. Play on. Snap. It's a point. Matera's quick snap. Yeah. Admonishes himself. This time, Christou not taking the kick Ooh. in. It's taken by Dean towards the outer side. Bradley's there. Paddles towards the boundary line. Paddles by Bradles. A high one, no distance. Oh, Kemp, it didn't go the 10 metres, no mark paid. But what a good effort by Dean Kemp. Now Bly will ball it up after all that. Hart comes off the ground for the West Coast. Uh, Lyle, Lyle, Lyle. Come on, coming on. So the change is really being uh, made here. Here's Hannah on the run. Oh, good take by Kudafides who dragged it in one-handed. Hannah, forward of the centre wing. Well played, Mill Hannah. He pops it up high. Rice marked the last one. Not this time. Jakovic is back there. Loses it in the tackle. Williams tries to find Rice. It didn't reach him. Look at the pressure yes. here. Jakovic. Free kick. Carlton free Spalding. kick. Spalding. And Big Earl Spalding, who with Greg Williams has shared villain of the peace honours today. Well, the thing is, he's right. He does it very well. Turns his body so that McKenna, in his forward thrust, really had no option but take Spalding in the back. Well worked, Spalding. Well umpired. Spalding looking to get his first goal. He's had 12 possessions. He cleaned up McKenna in a fair bump early in the game. From a set shot, he's not the best kick in the league. But if he goals, he'll put the Blues in front. But he has... Four points. And the sign said Vic Power, but it's a former West Australian Sheffield Shield cricketer who put Carlton in front. And great support for Carlton here at Subiaco today. There's a heap of noise. It really, this has had everything this game, and we're getting it right down to the wire. Smart thinking from Earl Spalding gives him the advantage over Glenn Jackovich in that situation. The Blues by four points, under eight minutes, Clappe written into the ground. Got to play Just smart now, you've got to play smart now in this situation and uh, the Carlton players being able to get in first and just turning their body so the Eagles are giving away those in the back free kicks. So Clappe actually kicked a goal in the opening term, he's been also in defence, he's playing against his old side. 
I don't know whether he fancies himself here, but he's lining up for a shot. He's about 120 metres out. <laughs> so he kicks long into 50. A mark's required. Kudafidi grabs it, but it's the man in front. So it's coming back to Djakovic. Make that turn ball. He's got a loose player out wide and Fraser Geary. Now he'll be off and running. He'll have to cut. He's going to come back on his left boot. He's got the pace. He's been caught. Great tackle, Kuda Fides. Mitchell White feeds it back to Banfield on 50. Centre of the ground, chance for Spalding. Could be a right, turnover for enough. Carlton. Bradley. Rice. Oh. He's, got, he's going to kick a goal. Yes. The Blues by 10 points. still wonder just uh, how clear in the head Guy McKenna is uh, carried off on a stretcher so the oh. Blues by 10 points Ratton gets a hand pass away but it's intercepted by Main Waring out to Kemp little left footer up to half forward Silvani works to the front but can't take the mark follows on and sees the ball out of play well the West Coast Eagles have led at every change by 10 points by six and by one but now Carlton lead by 10 points with under six minutes remaining. Madden's had no help in the ruck and uh, he's done it all day. So I'll take it back. The veteran playing his 307th is going all right, right at the end. In the centre square. Ratton applies a tackle. Hurried kick, Banfield. Juggled mark, no mark. Acropolis. Heady paddles for Lewis. Soccer's forward. McIntosh. Back to Chris Lewis. Borks. Floats a hand pass. Dean meets it and is taken out of it when he didn't have it. Lewis snaps for a goal and kicks it. So four points the difference. The Eagles still in this. The Blues by four points. Madden wins the tap. Main wearing. Runs onto the ball. Whitehead off the interchange bench he's booted two now Bond paddles the ball along in front at ground level Camper rally stacks on the mill this has been a great game for Scott Camper rally a match to Matera it's been an extreme learning curve for Scott Camper rally today it's been tremendous he's met every challenge great contest between those two Madden wins the tap Camper rally Heads for the boundary line, and the fans on the fence. They thought he meant to put it over, and I think they're right. <laughs> of course they're right. Madden just thumps it back for a bit of respite. Hey, what about the game by Harry Madden? We've got the centre hit out, so 20 to 8 in favour of Carlton. He's had 10 possessions. There's one ruck on the side. He's been on the ball all day in the heat. He's been uh, absolutely marvellous. Here's Williams. Can he weave a bit of magic? Clappe. Trips the lights. Fantastic. Gives it back to Madden. And that'll give him a few more extra seconds to get his breath. Four minutes, 27 seconds remaining here at Subiaco Oval. And Carlton try to stretch their winning break to 12 matches in a row. Lead by four points. Lyle for the Eagles, a centering kick. Hetty and Manton. Hetty's hand pass missed oh. the target. Well done by Glenn Manton. Paddles the ball out. Pike, Djakovic. Lyle, outside of his foot towards the boundary line. Matera, he's worked in this space beautifully all day. He was a bit slick for Simmons. He'll get it back from Simmons. Oh, he's a magician. He didn't quite get the support from his teammate then, and the ball is out of play on centre wing. This game has been played at a level, Terry, that few games have been played at this year. Definitely. I just hope uh, people watching on the television get the same impact that's occurring here, and it's still going. Well, there was a bit going on here between Camparelli and Matera, and Matera's given away the free kick and can't believe it. Camparelli up short of the 50. Here's Greg Williams. Goes for the goal. Offline, a behind. So it's a three-point game, the Blues in front. She does the diesel. 
He's had 19 possessions. Hasn't kicked a goal today. So Carlton by five points. Banfield's loose. So he has to kick over the man on the mark. Madden against Turnbull. He'll punch from behind. Clappe with quick hands to Camper Rally, who's been very good today. A classic duel. Back to Clappe. Here's a chance. Bond running with a fly. The ball is quick. He's got it. Well, this youngster has got a chance to maybe bury the West Coast Eagles. Although there's still three minutes to go. Missed. And just rushed it a bit too, Terry, I felt. Yeah, it's, but he had, going into the game, he had one goal, ten behinds to his uh, score tally and, and hasn't really taken hold of the opportunities throughout the year. <laughs> Never a more important shot than that one, I would suggest. He looked a bit concerned going back. He was looking to pass the ball off, maybe put the ball down, pull up the socks. So the Eagles still with a chance. Sporting's got two to beat and does it well. He's off. Inside 50, he's got a loose player, Williams. Simmons, what a mark! <laughs> and what a game, what a contest. Simmons. Two and a half minutes left in the game. Goes short. He finds Gehrig. To the wing, Kernahan. Struggled most of the day. He's held hand up, not paid. Well, with six points, the difference. A draw is not out of the question here. We've had three draws this season already. Wouldn't be a bad result for this game of football, would it? Hannah. They had to concede ground. Back to Manton. He's gone. He's lost it. Oh, Silvani did all right. Bradley dropped it. Lyle tackling fierce. And Manton got the ball over the boundary line for a throw-in with <laughs> two minutes remaining here at Subiaco Oval. He's done some desperate things today, Manton. You know, not the most talented player, but he's got a big heart. He's certainly a valuable player to the squad. He's been uh, good. He can come on. He can play in the forward line or in the back line. Very good. Drew, you just mentioned a draw. I think what we're looking for here is that perhaps we should be able to have that extra time at the end of a draw like this because this is the sort of atmosphere and pressure that finals will have. So it was out of bounds, but it wasn't a throw in, a free to Carlton. It goes to Clappe, and on the run, Clappe goes for the goal. And a point's handy. The Blues lead by seven points. Well, he would have liked to have drilled that against his old side. I think there might have been a few high fives. McKenna brings the ball back. They need time now. Playing on quickly is Gehrig. I need two scoring shots back to Gehrig. Wilson's back on the ground. Great mark. Right. Very good Manton. mark. Manton. Been strong in this last term. He's done some courageous things. Back to Hannah. Back to Manton. A few seconds tick away. Slowing things down. No hurry now for the Blues. 98 to 105. The Blues in front. Madden. Couldn't get his hand to it. Main wearing. Kicks a long bomb back. Silvani can't take the mark. Heady at ground level. Feeds it off. Here's Matera. He'll kick a goal. He has. One point the difference. Can you believe it, Drew? Well, that may be just how vital that point by Clappe was, but there's time left for the Eagles to get another goal and win the game. This is incredible stuff that Peter Matera still has this speed, this leg speed at the end of what's been a tremendous game of football. He suffered cramp early in the late in the third quarter, right back there. Well, the crowd's not to know. The ground clock shows 31 minutes gone in this last quarter. And we're playing 20 minute quarters plus time on. We can say there's under a minute left here and Ooh. a goal can snatch it yet for the Eagles. Williams in the middle, goes to ground. It was Bond. Ratton at ground level, gets himself over the ball and will have a ball up and the clock ticks the whole time. 
With one point the margin, Carlton 105, the Eagles 104. Stoic effort by Madden, it goes Carlton's A way. Great Bradley knock. Roves, the ball inside the 50. Time running out for the Eagles. And out of bounds at the moment will do the Blues. The clock stops on 20 seconds to go. It's at Carlton's end and they lead by a point. Big Harry Madden was tremendous there. As others start to slow down, you get any shorter, Big Harry, and a great knockout. The tap down comes to Lyle. He's robbed by Ratton. A snap across the front of goal. McKenna with Rice. McKenna to the line. Seven seconds left as we have another boundary throw in. And Carlton in attack are going to win it. Terry, that was a great knock by Justin Madden. Just cleared the area yep. perfectly. Allowed them to run onto it. Boundary throw in. Kernahan wins it. Comes to Simmons. He juggles the ball. Gets away from Rice. The kick up the centre wing. Siren! The Blues have won it by a point. So Carlton have now won 12 straight. What a game here at Subiaco Oval. The Blues home by a thriller, and we enjoyed it here in Pinocchio. It's Turak Road, South Yarra, owned by Fraser Gehrig. Fraser, Cooter, was one of those really great matches, wasn't it? Certainly was, mate. It uh, obviously didn't go our way, but um, we did have some great matches in that era between mm. the two, two sides, and uh, that was no exception. I think everyone would have been thrilled just watching that game, you know, the West Coast Eagles supporters and the Carlton supporters. It was just close all the way through, and it was uh, exactly what the supporters wanted. Uh, Fraser, you gave uh, Glenn Jakovic a bit of a bait before the game started about how he uh, didn't protect Guy McKenna. He was pretty strong in some of that marking jewels in that nah, match. No, he was. He was uh, obviously a very good one-on-one -on -one and uh, had some great battles with Earl, I know, and uh, certainly with uh, guys like Kerry and all that, and he held his own against anyone. So he um, was a big boy and hard to move off the footy. Kurt, that was an unforgettable season for Carlton. Yeah, it was. We went on to win the Premiership, of course. We won 16 in a row, so we never would have thought that, but we... Uh, we knew we had to bounce back from the year before and we put it all together. Some players were getting a bit older, Neil, and uh, we had to do it for them too. Well, you beat Geelong by 10 goals in the grand final. You had 19 grabs in the first half of the grand final. Must have felt pretty comfortable at half time. Yeah, we did. Uh, it was a big scuffle at half time when Ange, Ange Christian, my mate, got involved with Billy Brownless and I stepped in and so I was pretty tired pretty after that. Pretty brave stepping in against Billy. Oh, mate, been... the haymakers that came flying, I could see it a, a minute before it came to me. And the last thing we want is a melee, but that looks as though it's what we've got. They're coming from everywhere on the outer side in front of the southern stand. We obviously, you know, ecstatic to go in at half time, knowing if we put in a good third quarter, we'll be able to win the game. Fraser, you had a lot of great games. You played in a lot of finals with West Coast, probably five years in a row. You played two preliminary finals with St Kilda. Um, you were one of the best players in both those preliminary finals. You got beaten by a goal and then Port won the flag. Never played in a grand final. Is that one of those things that you... No, nah, yeah, it just wasn't. Don't think it was meant to happen for, for us at the, at the time. We um, could have went either way against Port Adelaide, who went on and won the flag, and we were up against Sydney in 05 and at three-quarter time. and. We basically had about eight blokes that probably shouldn't have played in the end, at the end of the day that weren't fit enough and ran out of legs and obviously Sydney went on to win the flag so uh, no excuses, just weren't good enough on the day. And, Do you uh, look at blokes like Kurta who've played in premierships and... Yeah, obviously and you know, I, to be honest, you know, I accept that I've missed the chance and uh, you are a little bit envious, that's the reason you play footy um, from a kid and uh, you know, keep my fingers crossed that the St Kilda boys will win one and uh, be able to celebrate with, with a couple of beers with them at some stage down the track. Do you go to the footy now? Not a hell of a lot. I, I still have a little bit to do um, with some of the players down there, but um, socially more so than anything. But uh, try to have a complete break from, pretty much from when I finish, but uh, certainly watch on the TV when I can. Kurt, what was he like to play on? Oh, he was tough. He was hard because he had the, uh, you know, the speed and the, and the strength and uh, the marking ability to be able to beat most players. And me being an athlete, he was a superb athlete too, so it was very tough to, to play on Fraser. We, we played against each other quite often and... Uh, I don't know, you may have even had the advantage over our career. Would you whisper a few niceties to you? Oh, I never did, Fraser. He never really spoke to me. And if you, no, if you had anything to say, it'd be nasty things. Something uh, about the Greek god, would he kind of... <laughs> you know? He was one player who didn't mention that because he was probably a bit of a god himself. Mm -hmm. Fraser, you were 19 back then, 1995. Would you like to be that again? 
Certainly would, mate. And, uh, what would you do differently? Didn't realise the hair was going to go so quick. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would do you too must, much. must look with envy at these blokes who win a premiership and have still got their own hair as well. Oh, exactly, just, mate. They've got Suvlaki hats popping up everywhere <laughs> yeah. all around the shop. I've only got one. <laughs> I've only got the one. Kuta, we've come along here to Pinocchio's on the invitation of Fraser. Um, you know, do you reckon we'll get any hospitality or...? I doubt it, because as far as I know, you're a silent partner, Fraser, and I don't think he's done too much work in the kitchen, so maybe the the, uh, the coffee w was fantastic, actually, but you didn't make it, did you, Fraser? No, I didn't, mate. I'll, uh, I think I'll be didn't passing so. the buck to yeah. one of you guys, but uh, certainly happy to have a go. <laughs> You've got to be worried about what we're going to get here, don't you? I think it might be just a lukewarm latte. We'll have no yeah, game you feeling, boys. Oh, do you make these, Fraser? Certainly did, mate, but I wouldn't feel... I don't know about drinking them. I don't know whether they'll be hot, but see how you go. It actually looks all right, Fraser. Well, I'm not going to say anything else, Fraser. This is beautiful, mate. I don't think they're hot, but uh, we'll soon see. Any good? Um, not great. It's fair to say I've had better, Fraser. <laughs> well, Fraser, cheers to you. <laughs> cheers. Thanks, boys. Magnificent. Fraser, thank you, and Neil. Good to see you, mate. Great hospitality. Thank you both. Ah, yes. Well done, boys. I'm glad that was Cooter and not me, by the way. I don't think I'd have the courage to bag Big Fraser's coffee. Well, what a great way to warm up for today's big game. Carlton and West Coast are set to resume hostilities next, when Sunday football continues, right here on 7.